Hey, 42 here. In 2009, in a lonely desert just above Albuquerque, building developers uncovered a grim scene. As they pushed a development into the West Mesa landmass, the construction of a shallow wall built to deal with stormwater inadvertently brought something horrifying to the surface. 11. Decomposing bodies, all buried in shallow graves. Over the course of several weeks, the police uncovered the graves, each of them spread out over a 92-acre stretch of land. It took a further year to identify them. All were women between the ages of 15 and 32, almost all were Hispanic, and almost all of them were prostitutes and drug users. One of the women had been pregnant, and her fetus was with her in the grave. Horrified by the discovery, the New Mexico authorities banded together with crack FBI profilers and detectives and set out to figure out what had happened. But the result was less than they had hoped for. Try as they might, they could not figure out what had happened to the women. There were clues, potential leads and even suspects, but nothing concrete. And to this day, the mystery has never been solved, and the serial killer, dubbed the West Mesa Bone Collector by the press, is still at large. The rarest form of homicide, the FBI defines a serial killer as an individual who kills two or more victims, previously unknown to the killer, and who takes his or her time between each kill. In what seems to be a modern phenomenon, serial killers have risen from the early days of Jack the Ripper to becoming a disturbingly common fixture in the news and the modern psyche, dominating countless movies, TV shows, and novels. In fact, serial killers have seemed to follow some of the largest societal changes of the last 400 to 500 years. Those being the rise of urbanization and its accompanying society of strangers, the rise of mass media and celebrity culture, and a culture that, through its very structure, helps to marginalise and disenfranchise the psychologically vulnerable. Whilst it's difficult to say with certainty what creates a serial killer, all that is clear is that the modern world is one of the most fertile environments for creating them. And these killers usually share certain characteristics. Over a 25-year period, forensic psychologists Dr. Mike Armott and his students trawled through data on almost 3,000 US-based serial killers and 10,000 of their victims. What they found was surprising. The vast majority of serial killers were below the age of 30, and the majority of them kill for enjoyment 31.8% or financial gain 30.1%. Almost half of their victims were shot to death as opposed to the more bizarre method of drilling holes into their head and then filling them with acid, as used by Jeffrey Dahmer. Following this, 21.7% were strangled to death and 14.8% were stabbed. It also became apparent that IQ differentiated the killer's methods, with the most intelligent amongst them using bombs. But in general, most serial killers are highly unintelligent, with an average IQ of 94.5, rather contrary to the pop culture idea of highly intelligent sociopaths. Also, despite the common assumption that they solely prey on women, the split between male and female victims was fairly equal. However, if you're white and young, then you're by far the preferred victim. It's also, apparently, a very short step from serial arson to hunting human beings. But perhaps most shocking of all is the data on how many serial killers just might still be at large. When, for instance, unsolved murders linked by DNA are considered, usually a hallmark of serial killing, it comes out at about 1,400 or 2% of all murders in the files consulted. This has led homicide analyst Thomas Hargrove to believe there are around 2,100 serial killers at large in the US. Michael Arnfield, a retired police detective and expert on serial murder, believes the number to be more like 3 to 4,000. Disturbingly, even though the number of serial killers has fallen to 1% of all killings, the lowest it has been in years, the rate of solved murder cases has decreased also meaning that 40% of the time, the killer remains at large. 
A lot of this comes down to linkage blindness, where cases are spread between multiple detectives and jurisdictions, but are rarely discussed across those boundaries. This may be why serial murderers such as Samuel Little, who have been linked to over 60 murders, have been able to be so prolific. The longer he remained at large, the more he continued to kill. It is why, even today, terrifying and disturbing serial killers still lurk amongst us. For various reasons, uncaught and free to roam, what follows are some of the most terrifying of all uncaught serial killers. In 2011, the New York State Police were conducting an investigation into the death of Shannon Gilbert. Her body had been found on Long Island's Gilgo Beach, and assuming it to be a single murder, the police looked for clues as to who the culprit was. But what they found was far greater than they could have ever possibly imagined. Near her corpse, they found a large grave filled with four dead bodies, all female. More searching discovered more graves, in which lay six more dead bodies, including that of a man dressed in women's clothing, and the body of a child. Amongst the graves were body parts that, once investigated, were found to be linked to unidentified bodies found miles away, connected to crimes dating as far back as 1996. It soon became clear to all that a new serial killer had been discovered, and he had been prolifically active for quite some time. So they began to look for clues. They found that the killer's victims were largely sex workers who advertised their trade on Craigslist, amongst whom was Melissa Bartholomew. After disappearing from her Bronx home in 2009, her parents immediately went to the authorities and sought some kind of help, but they were largely ignored. It wasn't until the family's young daughter started receiving unsettling phone calls from an unknown number, with a man's voice saying, I killed Melissa. Since then, the Long Island serial killer, as he's come to be known, has been pursued with great energy by the authorities and a number of details have begun to emerge. Chief amongst them is that the killer has an in-depth knowledge of law enforcement techniques and a possible connection to law enforcement itself, which would explain how meticulous he is and how effective he is at evading capture. One suspect was former Suffolk County Police Chief James Burke he was reported to have blocked an FBI probe into the Long Island serial killer during his employment as police chief. But, as yet, the true identity of the killer remains unknown. In 2005, the decomposed body of a 28-year-old woman was fished out of a canal in the Jefferson Davis Parish of southwest Louisiana. She was a known drug addict who had turned to prostitution in order to fund her addiction, and her death was chalked up to being another victim of the drug trade. But it wasn't. Within three months, another woman's body, also a prostitute, was discovered in another canal. In 2007, another victim with the same profile was discovered in another canal. Within 18 months, a further four dead bodies were discovered, all of the same profile and all in the same region. All were in the states of decomposition and all were victims of asphyxiation. And even though the Jefferson Davis Parish Police assembled a task force to investigate, it wasn't long before an eighth body arrived in August 2009. It was now that the police began to acknowledge that this was the work of a serial killer, and the victims soon became known as the Jeff Davis Eight. However, when author and investigator Ethan Brown began to look into the case, he found something perhaps even more disturbing. What appeared to have been the work of a serial killer might actually be something more like a cover-up. But a cover-up of what, exactly? All the victims had served as police informants, and all had been terrified before they vanished. With none of them able to rely on the help of the police, one member of the sheriff's office had been named a suspect by multiple witnesses, he was said to cruise around town with his wife, picking up prostitutes, drugging them, and then bring them back to their sex room. Despite this, he was only interviewed by the task force once. 
Perhaps even more shocking was the allegation that Louisiana Congressman Charles Bustani had sex with three of the victims in a seedy hotel, owned by one of his representatives. Although this allegation was met with a lawsuit, it was dropped in late December, and the allegation stands to this day. Unsettlingly, a truck owned by the chief investigator was involved in the case, with witnesses saying they saw one of the victims inside. But the vehicle was later scrubbed clean of evidence, and the officer whistleblower involved in bringing this information to light was soon out of a job. Something was clearly going on, but to this day, nothing concrete about a serial killer or a cover-up has yet to come to light, and whoever committed the crimes may still be at large. Perhaps the most famous serial killer who is still on the loose is the Zodiac Killer. Active in the late 60s, the Zodiac Killer was responsible for the murders of five people in Northern California, and has since become one of the most enigmatic and haunting serial killers in history. Not so much for the crimes themselves, which were incredibly violent, but for the unsettling interactions he had with the police. And when you stand out amongst serial killers in California, a state with a laundry list of infamous serial killers, you know you're a bizarre individual. The five killings, at first, seemed random. But when the police and newspapers began receiving strange letters from an individual claiming to be the killer, it came clear that a serial killer was involved. But here's the thing. Anyone could have sent a prank letter claiming to be the killer, these letters, however, were laden with haunting symbols, references to astrology and even to fiction. The letters referred to the fact that man was the most dangerous game, an obvious nod to the short story and film from the early 20th century of the same name, which later became the inspiration for the 1987 movie Predator. One letter even included a piece of the victim's shirt. The killer's letters included a 408 symbol cryptogram, which was said to reveal his identity, but when it was finally cracked, it revealed something more sinister. A misspelt message which read, I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest. Because man is the most dangerous animal of all to kill, something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise. And thee I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. Creepy, right? Of his victims, he killed two young lovers making out after parking his car right beside theirs. When the boyfriend got out of the car to confront the mysterious visitor, he was shot dead. The girlfriend was then killed as she fled. Her body was found eight meters from the car. Not long after, he did the exact same thing to another couple, with one of the victims surviving and describing the Zodiac Killer as a late 20s white male, approximately 200 pounds with curly brown hair. Later, the Zodiac attacked a couple having a picnic on the shores of Lake Berryessa, arriving dressed in a black outfit and hood with a white circle and cross painted on his chest. The Zodiac held the couple at gunpoint tied them both up, then attempted to stab them to death. When he was done, he went to the victim's car, drew the circle and cross symbol on the door, and wrote Vallejo, 12 20 68, 7 4 69, September 27 69, 6 30, by knife. The Zodiac then went to a nearby payphone and informed the police once discovered, one of the victims survived and managed to tell everyone about this horrifying encounter. The letters abruptly stopped in 1974, but the Zodiac Killer was never caught. He has at least five victims to his name and claims to have killed over 37. Police have amassed over 2,500 suspects, but even with DNA testing and one man claiming the Zodiac Killer was his father, Nothing has ever led to a breakthrough, and the chilling hunter of men still remains at large. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, because it really helps me to continue to make these videos. The link's in the description. 
Also, you can get your hands on a first edition signed copy of my new book, Sticker Flag in It, by heading on over to Unbound Publishing, the link's in the description, and pre-ordering yours today. Thank you.